Gastrointestinal Tract, Wikipedia Article Audio The gastrointestinal tract is an organ system within humans and other animals which takes in food, digests it to extract and absorb energy and nutrients, and expels the remaining waste as feces. The mouth, esophagus, stomach, and intestines are part of the gastrointestinal tract. Gastrointestinal is an adjective meaning of or pertaining to the stomach and intestines. A tract is a collection of related anatomic structures or a series of connected body organs. All bilaterians have a gastrointestinal tract, also called a gut or an alimentary canal. This is a tube that transfers food to the organs of digestion. In large bilaterians, the gastrointestinal tract generally also has an exit, the anus, by which the animal disposes of feces. Some small bilaterians have no anus and dispose of solid wastes by other means. Human Gastrointestinal Tract Structure The gastrointestinal tract contains thousands of different bacteria in its gut flora, that play an important role in the immune system. The human gastrointestinal tract consists of the esophagus, stomach, and intestines, and is divided into the upper and lower gastrointestinal tracts. The GI tract includes all structures between the mouth and the anus, forming a continuous passageway that includes the main organs of digestion, namely, the stomach small intestine, and large intestine. However, the complete human digestive system comprises the gastrointestinal tract plus the accessory organs of digestion. The tract may also be divided into foregut, midgut, and hindgut, reflecting the embryological origin of each segment. The whole human GI tract is about 9 meters long at autopsy. It is considerably shorter in the living body because the intestines, which are tubes of smooth muscle tissue, maintain constant muscle tone, somewhat like a slinky that maintains itself in a halfway tense state but can relax in spots to allow for local distension, peristalsis, and so on. The GI tract releases hormones from enzymes to help regulate the digestive process. These hormones, including gastrin, secretin, cholecystokinin, and ghrelin, are mediated through either intracrine or autocrine mechanisms, indicating that the cells releasing these hormones are conserved structures throughout evolution. The structure and function can be described both as gross anatomy and as microscopic anatomy or histology. The tract itself is divided into upper and lower tracts and the intestines small and large parts. Upper Gastrointestinal Tract The upper gastrointestinal tract consists of the buccal cavity, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, and duodenum. The exact demarcation between the upper and lower tracts is the suspensory muscle of the duodenum. This delineates the embryonic borders between the foregut and midgut and is also the division commonly used by clinicians to describe gastrointestinal bleeding as being of either upper or lower origin. Upon dissection, the duodenum may appear to be a unified organ, but it is divided into four segments based upon function, location, and internal anatomy. The four segments of the duodenum are as follows, bulb, descending, horizontal, and ascending. The suspensory muscle attaches the superior border of the ascending duodenum to the diaphragm. The suspensory muscle is an important anatomical landmark which shows the formal division between the duodenum and the jejunum, the first and second parts of the small intestine, respectively. This is a thin muscle which is derived from the embryonic mesoderm. Lower Gastrointestinal Tract the lower gastrointestinal tract includes most of the small intestine and all of the large intestine. In human anatomy, 
the intestine is the segment of the gastrointestinal tract extending from the pyloric sphincter of the stomach to the anus and, as in other mammals, consists of two segments, the small intestine and the large intestine. In humans, the small intestine is further subdivided into the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum while the large intestine is subdivided into the cecum, colon, rectum, and anal canal. The small intestine begins at the duodenum and is a tubular structure, usually between 6 and 7 m long. Its mucosal area in an adult human is about 30 m2. Its main function is to absorb the products of digestion into the bloodstream. There are three major divisions. The large intestine also called the colon, consists of the cecum, rectum, and anal canal. It also includes the appendix, which is attached to the cecum. The colon is further divided into Small intestine the main function of the large intestine is to absorb water. The area of the large intestinal mucosa of an adult human is about 2 m2. Large intestine The gut is an endoderm-derived structure. At approximately the 16th day of human development, the embryo begins to fold ventrally in two directions. The sides of the embryo fold in on each other and the head and tail fold toward one another. The result is that a piece of the yolk sac, an endoderm line structure in contact with the ventral aspect of the embryo, begins to be pinched off to become the primitive gut. The yolk sac remains connected to the gut tube via the vitellin duct. Usually this structure regresses during development. In cases where it does not, it is known as Meckel's diverticulum. Development During fetal life, the primitive gut is gradually patterned into three segments, foregut, midgut, and hindgut. Although these terms are often used in reference to segments of the primitive gut, they are also used regularly to describe regions of the definitive gut as well. Each segment of the gut is further specified and gives rise to specific gut and gut-related structures in later development. Components derived from the gut proper, including the stomach and colon, develop as swellings or dilatations in the cells of the primitive gut. In contrast, gut-related derivatives that is, those structures that derive from the primitive gut but are not part of the gut proper, in general develop as outpouchings of the primitive gut. The blood vessels supplying these structures remain constant throughout development. Histology The gastrointestinal tract has a form of general histology with some differences that reflect the specialization in functional anatomy. The GI tract can be divided into four concentric layers in the following order. The mucosa is the innermost layer of the gastrointestinal tract. That is surrounding the lumen, or open space within the tube. This layer comes in direct contact with digested food. The mucosa is made up of The mucosae are highly specialized in each organ of the gastrointestinal tract to deal with the different conditions. The most variation is seen in the epithelium. The submucosa consists of a dense irregular layer of connective tissue with large blood vessels, lymphatics, and nerves branching into the mucosa and muscularis externa. It contains the submucosal plexus, an enteric nervous plexus, situated on the inner surface of the muscularis externa. The muscular layer consists of an inner circular layer and a longitudinal outer layer. The circular layer prevents food from traveling backward and the longitudinal layer shortens the tract. The layers are not truly longitudinal or circular, rather the layers of muscle are helical with different pitches. The inner circular is helical with a steep pitch and the outer longitudinal is helical with a much shallower pitch. Mucosa 
between the two muscle layers is the myenteric plexus. This controls peristalsis. Activity is initiated by the pacemaker cells. The gut has intrinsic peristaltic activity due to its self-contained enteric nervous system. The rate can be modulated by the rest of the autonomic nervous system. Submucosa The coordinated contractions of these layers is called peristalsis and propels the food through the tract. Food in the GI tract is called a bolus from the mouth down to the stomach. After the stomach, the food is partially digested and semi-liquid, and is referred to as chyme. In the large intestine the remaining semi-solid substance is referred to as feces. Mucosa, submucosa, muscular layer, adventitia or serosa. The outermost layer of the gastrointestinal tract consists of several layers of connective tissue. Intraperitoneal parts of the GI tract are covered with serosa. These include most of the stomach, first part of the duodenum, all of the small intestine, cecum, and appendix, transverse colon, sigmoid colon and rectum. In these sections of the gut there is clear boundary between the gut and the surrounding tissue. These parts of the tract have a mesentery. Epithelium innermost layer Responsible for most digestive, absorptive, and secretory processes, lamina propria a layer of connective tissue. Unusually cellular compared to most connective tissue, muscularis mucosi a thin layer of smooth muscle that aids the passing of material and enhances the interaction between the epithelial layer and the contents of the lumen by agitation and peristalsis. Retroperitoneal parts are covered with adventitia. They blend into the surrounding tissue and are fixed in position. For example, the retroperitoneal section of the duodenum usually passes through the transpyloric plane. These include the esophagus, pylorus of the stomach, distal duodenum, ascending colon, descending colon, and anal canal. In addition, the oral cavity has adventitia. Muscular layer Adventitia and serosa Gene and protein expression Function Approximately 20,000 protein coding genes are expressed in human cells and 75% of these genes are expressed in at least one of the different parts of the digestive organ system. Over 600 of these genes are more specifically expressed in one or more parts of the GI tract and the corresponding proteins have functions related to digestion of food and uptake of nutrients. Examples of specific proteins with such functions are pepsinogen PGC and the lipase LIPF, expressed in chief cells, and gastric ADPase ATP4A and gastric intrinsic factor GIF expressed in parietal cells of the stomach mucosa. Specific proteins expressed in the stomach and duodenum involved in defense include mucin proteins, such as mucin 6 and intellectin 1. Gastrointestinal cancer may occur at any point in the gastrointestinal tract, and includes mouth cancer, tongue cancer, esophageal cancer, stomach cancer, and colorectal cancer inflammatory conditions. Ileitis is an inflammation of the ileum, colitis is an inflammation of the large intestine, appendicitis is inflammation of the appendix located at the cecum. This is a potentially fatal condition if left untreated, most cases of appendicitis require surgical intervention. The time taken for food or other ingested objects to transit through the gastrointestinal tract varies depending on many factors, but roughly, it takes less than an hour after a meal for 50% of stomach contents to empty into the intestines while total emptying takes around 2 hours. Subsequently, 50% emptying of the small intestine takes between 1 and 2 hours.
Finally, transit through the colon takes 12 to 50 hours with wide variation between individuals. The gastrointestinal tract forms an important part of the immune system. The surface area of the digestive tract is estimated to be about 32 square meters, or about half a badminton court. With such a large exposure, these immune components function to prevent pathogens from entering the blood and lymph circulatory systems. Fundamental components of this protection are provided by the intestinal mucosal barrier which is composed of physical, biochemical and immune elements elaborated by the intestinal mucosa. Microorganisms also are kept at bay by an extensive immune system comprising the gut-associated lymphoid tissue. There are additional factors contributing to protection from pathogen invasion. For example, Low pH of the stomach is fatal for many microorganisms that enter it. Similarly, mucus neutralizes many pathogenic microorganisms. Other factors in the GI tract contribution to immune function include enzymes secreted in the saliva and bile. Vomiting, which may include regurgitation of food or the vomiting of blood, diarrhea, or the passage of liquid or more frequent stools, constipation, which refers to the passage of fewer and hardened stools, blood in stool, which includes fresh red blood, maroon-colored blood, and tarry-colored blood. Beneficial bacteria also can contribute to the homeostasis of the gastrointestinal immune system. For example Clostridia one of the most predominant bacterial groups in the GI tract, play an important role in influencing the dynamics of the gut's immune system. It has been demonstrated that the intake of a high-fiber diet could be the responsible for the induction of T-regulatory cells. This is due to the production of short-chain fatty acids during the fermentation of plant-derived nutrients such as butyrate and propionate. Basically, the butyrate induces the differentiation of Treg cells by enhancing histone H3 acetylation in the promoter and conserved non-coding sequence regions of the FOXP3 locus, thus regulating the T cells, resulting in the reduction of the inflammatory response and allergies. The large intestine hosts several kinds of bacteria that can deal with molecules that the human body cannot otherwise break down. This is an example of symbiosis. These bacteria also account for the production of gases at host pathogen interface, inside our intestine. However the large intestine is mainly concerned with the absorption of water from digested material and the reabsorption of sodium as well as any nutrients that may have escaped primary digestion in the ileum. Health-enhancing intestinal bacteria of the gut flora serve to prevent the overgrowth of potentially harmful bacteria in the gut. These two types of bacteria compete for space and food, as there are limited resources within the intestinal tract. A ratio of 80 to 85 percent beneficial to 15 20 percent potentially harmful bacteria generally is considered normal within the intestines. Immune function Enzymes such as CYP3A4, along with the anti porter activities, are also instrumental in the intestines' role of drug metabolism in the detoxification of antigens and xenobiotics. There are many diseases and conditions that can affect the gastrointestinal system, including infections, inflammation, and cancer. Various pathogens can cause gastroenteritis and inflammation of the stomach and small intestine. These can include those organisms that cause foodborne illnesses. Gastroenteritis is the most common disease of the GI tract. Immune barrier Immune system homeostasis Intestinal microbiota Diverticular disease is a condition that is very common in older people in industrialized countries. 
It usually affects the large intestine but has been known to affect the small intestine as well. Diverticulosis occurs when pouches form on the intestinal wall. Once the pouches become inflamed it is known as diverticulitis. Inflammatory bowel disease is an inflammatory condition affecting the bowel walls, and includes the subtypes Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. While Crohn's can affect the entire gastrointestinal tract, ulcerative colitis is limited to the large intestine. Crohn's disease is widely regarded as an autoimmune disease. Although ulcerative colitis is often treated as though it were an autoimmune disease, there is no consensus that it actually is such. Functional gastrointestinal disorders the most common of which is irritable bowel syndrome. Functional constipation and chronic functional abdominal pain are other functional disorders of the intestine that have physiological causes but do not have identifiable structural, chemical, or infectious pathologies. Several symptoms are used to indicate problems with the gastrointestinal tract. Gastrointestinal surgery can often be performed in the outpatient setting. In the United States in 2012, Operations on the digestive system accounted for three of the 25 most common ambulatory surgery procedures and constituted 9.1% of all outpatient ambulatory surgeries. Detoxification and Drug Metabolism Various methods of imaging the gastrointestinal tract include the upper and lower gastrointestinal series. Animal intestines have multiple uses. From each species of livestock that is a source of milk, a corresponding rennet is obtained from the intestines of milk-fed calves. Pig and calf intestines are eaten, and pig intestines are used as sausage casings. Calf intestines supply calf intestinal alkaline phosphatase, and are used to make gold beater's skin. Other uses are Many birds and other animals have a specialized stomach in the digestive tract called a gizzard used for grinding up food. Another feature not found in the human but found in a range of other animals is the crop. In birds this is found as a pouch alongside the esophagus. Other animals including amphibians, birds, reptiles, and egg-laying mammals have a major difference in their GI tract in that it ends in a cloaca and not an anus. Clinical Significance Diseases Symptoms Treatment Imaging Other related diseases Uses of animal guts other animals Radio opaque dyes may be swallowed to produce a barium swallow, parts of the tract may be visualized by camera. This is known as endoscopy if examining the upper gastrointestinal tract, and colonoscopy or sigmoidoscopy if examining the lower gastrointestinal tract. Capsule endoscopy is where a capsule containing a camera is swallowed in order to examine the tract. Biopsies may also be taken when examined, an abdominal x-ray may be used to examine the lower gastrointestinal tract. The use of animal gut strings by musicians can be traced back to the Third Dynasty of Egypt. In the recent past, strings were made out of lamb gut. With the advent of the modern era, musicians have tended to use strings made of silk, or synthetic materials such as nylon or steel. Some instrumentalists, however, still use gut strings in order to evoke the older tone quality. Although such strings were commonly referred to as cat gut strings, cats were never used as a source for gut strings. Sheep gut was the original source for natural gut string used in rackets, such as for tennis. Today, synthetic strings are much more common, but the best gut strings are now made out of cow gut, 
Gut cord has also been used to produce strings for the snares that provide a snare drum's characteristic buzzing timbre. While the modern snare drum almost always uses metal wire rather than gut cord, the North African bender frame drum still uses gut for this purpose. Natural sausage hulls, or casings, are made of animal gut, especially hog, beef, and lamb. The wrapping of cocorizi, gardobachia, and torsinello is made of lamb gut. Haggis is traditionally boiled in, and served in, a sheep stomach. Chitlins, a kind of food, consist of thoroughly washed pig's gut. Animal gut was used to make the cord lines. In long case clocks and for fusee movements in bracket clocks, but may be replaced by metal wire, the oldest known condoms, from 1640 AD, were made from animal intestine.